Okay, so we're gonna we'll look at one reaction and then we'll just uh, point out some different parts of it and then uh, use some terms related to it. All right, so the reaction we're gonna look at is a reaction of nitrogen dioxide and carbon dioxide. And when it reacts, it will produce two products, nitrogen monoxide and carbon dioxide. Okay? So that's a reaction that takes place. And then um, the rate, so in an experiment, they do an experiment, and the experiment says, like you guys would take a look at, and the experiment says the rate law is this. So I'm going to go ahead and put it up here. Rate law for this experiment is equal to K times an order of two. Nitrogen dioxide, an order of two. Okay? So that's what they say that the rate law would be experimentally. They just determine, like you guys determine your experiment the same way. So we got this reaction, and so one individual comes along and he says, this is the way I think it reacts. Okay? So I'm going to use some terms here in a second. But he thinks, what I think happens, there's two elementary steps. Step one, I think what's going to happen is NO2 is going to collide with another NO2 molecule. And when they collide, they're going to form NO3 molecule and an NO molecule. So this is this would be called a unimolecular collision. Uni means one. So one molecule is involved in that collision. So this step would be called a, a, a unimolecularity. Okay, it's on page 49, 490. It talks about where you have one species comes together and, and collides. So that would be step one. So step two of this reaction, um, it says that I, the person says, I, what I think is going to happen is in that NO3 molecule is going to collide with the carbon monoxide molecule. And when that happens, we get uh, two products out of that reaction that would be NO2 plus CO2. Okay, so that would be step two. He Wait, said, would it just be NO? Uh, nope, it would be NO2. Oh, okay. So what, Jared, what he's saying is that they're going to collide. One of the oxygen atoms is going to stick onto the NO2 from the NO. Yeah. Okay, and then this NO3 that's produced is going to collide with the carbon monoxide. And this is oops. This is a bimolecular collision. You got two different species that come together that collide, and then you form. Then what they say is that this oxygen is going to come off this NO3, and it's going to go on CO. And it's going to form CO2, yeah. and the other product's NO2. Well, the only way that this can work, there's two things that have to take place. One, when we add it up. When we add these two up, we should come up with the overall reaction. So the first thing that has to take place is when you cancel out your reactants and products, you should always come up to be the overall reaction. If it does not do that, then it is not a viable reaction mechanism. So is this a viable reaction mechanism? It's got to pass that, pass that first one. Okay, it is, right? Because what we do is we cross out NO3, all right? And then um, NO2 crosses out, right? One of them? All right, anything else? So we're left with NO2 plus CO gives us NO plus CO2. Okay, we're good. That part's good. 
So any questions on that? So you can make up any collisions that you want to, and if, you know, it, if it comes out to be this um, as your overall reaction, then, I mean, it's possible, and then you'd have to do further experimentation, okay, in which to take a look at different types of reactions and see how, I don't know how they all work to kind of, you know, to check them later on. So that would be one. Any questions on that? So it has to pass that. For, now, usually, when you've got a reaction, there's going to be one of the react, one of the elementary steps that is slow. Okay, so let's say we're doing, um, we're sending out letters. Okay, I've got a hundred to hundred and twenty to send out to all my students, and uh, I'm going to have you guys help me out. Okay, in the process. So let me see what I need to do, have everybody help me with. So. What I do with my writing thing? That's that's the rate determining step right now. I can't find my writing thing. Okay, so I found it. <laughs> so, all right. So we got somebody uh, stuffing the letters. Oh no, folding the letter. We got a folder. We got a stuffer. We got a stamper. Um, we have uh, one that will do the writing. No, that's Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have stamps for the. I have a stamp. I have a stamp for my uh, my return address, but I don't have stamps or the stickers for everybody. So somebody's going to have to write out the name, and I got a list of addresses and that. So. If, let's say we do this. Let's just put it in this. Let's say that the writer is first. And then we have um, the, the next one. We'll have the folder, the stuffer, and the stamper. Uh, now, when you look at all these steps, there's going to be one that stands out as the slowest step. What's the slowest step? The writer. The writer. Don't want to have that step. Okay? Because you're going to hold, to hold everybody else up. Okay? The folder would take long to tri-fold it. The stuffer, okay? You know, and then uh, sealing it, no big deal. Putting a stamp on would probably be the fastest step. So guess what? All of these Steps, elementary steps, this process of sending these out eventually, has to wait on the writing. They can, they can go as fast as they want. They, well, they really can't go as fast as they want to, right? Because they got to wait to get the envelope before it can be stuffed. Okay, now the folder can fold them, but the stuffer is not going to be able to stuff them until the envelope is written, the written address is on there, if we go in that order. Right? Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay, if we go in that order. If we go in that order. Uh, so that's what happens in reactions. There's always one. Now let's say that we had, let's say we had the folder go first, then the writer, stuffer, and stamper. We need some writers. Let's say, let's say that we do this. So the folder's folding really fast. The writer's writing. Okay? We don't get to the, what we call the, 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 the they call it the rate determining step. The rate at which getting these all done is the writing. If it's a second step, okay, the first step um, will go along, but really what determines it is the second step. So when that happens in a reaction, this step can go as fast as it wants, but the overall rest of steps depends upon the writing. So just a just a different example to think of an analogy associated with that. Alright. So if you would turn over to page 490 if you have your book. These two steps, one of them is going to be a slow step. And one's going to be a fast step. Now on this, 
um, when we take a look at the steps, um, and taking a look at the steps, it says um, that the first step is a slow step. So this is determined. This is determined to be the slow step. Slow, and this is a fast step. Okay. So, the second thing you look at to determine if, the, if it's a viable reaction mechanism is that on the reactant side, you would look at the reactant side to see if it fits with your rate law. So up here is our rate law, experimentally. What you do is you just look at the reactants, we don't look at the products. So, what you would do, since you have two NO2s, that would mean that it's an order of two, because we have NO2 and NO2, which means that when you take and put these together in a rate law, it would be rate is equal to K, NO2 squared, since we have two of them on that side. Now, if we only had one of them on that side, then it would not agree, okay? Then it would not agree. So, like, like if this was my slow step, Okay, and it was listed first, and that would not agree. All right. So is a slow step always going to be listed first? No. It can be listed second, and if it's listed second, okay, so like if, if these are switched around, okay, and it's listed second, okay, let's just do that, just, just to do it. It would not agree with, it would not agree with uh, the rate law. And how do you know which one's the fast one again? It'll tell you. The person setting it up will say which one's the fast step, which one's the slow step. So let's say this is fast and this is slow. Then what you would do to figure out the rate, now this NO3 is called an intermediate. And an intermediate definition of it is it's not a reactant or a product and it's uh, produced in one step and used up in another. So when, they, when you look at definition, what's called an intermediate, an intermediate is produced in one step and used up in another. Okay, so NO3 would be an intermediate, and that would not be included in your rate law because it's only reactants. So on this, what would our rate law be? It would be NO2 squared times CO. So if I just did this one because we combine the fast step and the slow step, because the fast can't go any faster and can't proceed to form products any faster than the slowest step. So what this would be, rate law, would be rate would equal K, and it'd be NO2 squared. I'm running into some problems here. Then it'd be NO2 squared, and then CO to the first order. Does that, does that agree with our rate law and experiment? No. Okay, so it would be NO2 squared and CO. This is not a reactant. That's an intermediate. So that, that wouldn't work. So it had to be the first one slow and the second one fast. An example. Okay, we're gonna, we'll do one more. Um, page 491. Okay, um, we'll just check this one out. Right? So on page 491, we have the following reaction, overall reaction, 2NO2 plus fluorine gas will give us NO2F. So here's the steps. Steps is NO2 will collide with F2. And after they collide, um, NO2F is formed plus a fluorine atom. Okay, and then the next step, they say that fluorine atom collides with an NO2 molecule in which to make NO2F. Okay. And it says the first one's slow, and, the, and slow, and the second one is fast. 
Okay, you guys determine if that's viable or not. Okay, don't try not to look down below. You go ahead and determine if that's a viable reaction mechanism. So it has to follow two things. When you add them up, it comes up with the overall reaction, and the rate law, um, oh, and I need to include that. The rate law says it's equal to K times um, NO2 and F2. So does it... Does it agree with uh, the overall reaction? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So F cancels. What's F called? <coughs> Intermediate. So then we got 2NO2 plus F2 NO2F. So it does match up. And does our slow step match the rate law? Yeah. yeah. It does. But how do you know that? Okay, so if I have NO2, Jared, yeah. and only have one of them that side, that's order of one. Mm -hmm. If I have F2 and only have one of them, it's an order of one. Oh, okay. So then rate is equal to K times the concentration of nitric dioxide and concentration of chlorine. So it can, it can match, like, the formula, but then it can not match the rate. And then right. The so if I had them flipped around, yeah. I had that one fast, that one slow, <coughs> then it would be NO2 in a, in a squared and F squared. Yeah. And that doesn't match it. Right? How would you get NO2 F squared? Okay, let's, How would you get NO2 squared? let's just do that yeah. then. So if I have it switched around, have this one fast, this one slow, you combine, to get the rate law, you combine everything down through the slow. So then you would have NO2 squared and F2. So it still uses the same order, but it Right. So, so okay. you would say, Jared, you'd say, you'd say to Colton, you're wrong, Colton, that can't be. Because when we look at rate law, the NO2 would be be an order of two, and it's an order of one in the experiment, so that can't be. You can't do it. So they always give us which, which, what order it's in and which one's faster. Yep. yep, they always give you the order... And which one's fast, which one's slow. The order really doesn't matter because all you have to do is look at the slow where it's at. Does that make sense? Logical? Okay. Uh, so, there's this. Now, turn over to page 492. Now, this 492 says, somebody else comes along and says, you know what? I come up with a, I've come up with a reaction mechanism that works too, for this this uh, this rate law. I've come up with one too, and the one I've come up with says that NO2 will re will collide with F2, and what happens? NOF2 is formed plus an oxygen atom, but then NO2 then will collide with that oxygen atom. The oxygen atom makes NO3. And then that NO, then NOF2, which is produced in the first reaction, will collide with an NO2. When it collides with NO2, we get NO2F. And NOF. And NOF. <laughs> NOF. NOF. Right? And then that NO3, produced in the second step, will collide with NO. F, which is intermediate in the third step, will make Na NO2 F plus NO2. So they're saying, hey, we got four elementary steps. The first one's the slowest. And these are fast. And the question is, does it agree with the overall reaction? And you go through and you go, well, NO3 is an intermediate. Oh, um, NOF is an intermediate. O oh. is oh, an intermediate. You cancel out one yeah. NO2s. NO2. The bottom. Yeah, so yeah, we can do either one. NO2 in here. NOF2 is 
So, did we get everything canceled? Uh, I think yeah. Two Does that agree? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that agrees. And then also, our slowest step agrees with the rate law. So this person would be, you know, those two things, it, they would say, yeah. If, theoretically. if theoretically, it could work. Okay? It satisfies the requirement. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to do this? Hmm? Come up with reaction mechanisms for reactions and how they collide and separate. I thought that's what we were doing for the housing. No, you will not. You will not come up with your own. You can. You can do it. That'd be kind of neat to see if you can come up with it. All right, guys. I was going to give you a quiz tomorrow, but I'm not. <laughs> quiz over what you guys have been doing. Going back to differential rate law. Oh, that's not bad. And integrated rate law that you're doing now. That's not bad. Where you're finding time and final concentration. But we'll save oh, that for a later that was, date. That was I could have done that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the lab was differentiated rate law, right? Uh, differentiated rate law, yeah. yeah. That's how you came up experimentally. Yeah. All right. So, guys, uh, I will give you an assignment that you can work on tomorrow. And it is, uh, I'm going to have you do... 61, so page 509, and it would be 61 through, okay, so these, these have to do with reaction mechanisms, going through and solving and answering the questions related to what we went through.